The formula. NL Ombre. Cap on the card at Keeneland. All 11 races Saturday, April 6th. Including the bluegrass. Let's do it. Trust the Profits is proud to be sponsored by Game of Silks. Go to silks.io to get in the game. Real ownership, real races, real rewards. Trust the Profits of Formula here. With El Hombre, we are on a marathon session here. Capping the card. We're going into Saturday now. Saturday, a race. If you guys are there, you're going to see a hombre, guaranteed, on a stretcher or a wheelchair. Who knows Wheelchair, what? hell yeah. Roll me out. But right now, we are 70% sober, and we are going to be capping the card for that very slate of races. El hombre, you ready to get this started off with race one? Please, let's go. Please, let's I'm go. I'm excited, and babe. I cannot so wait I. to see everybody there. we got a lot of people meeting up with us, and, uh, you know. I can't wait for the fun. stories. Keeneland is always a beautiful sight to behold. It's a beautiful, the rolling hills of Lexington. I cannot wait to be there. I'll be there tomorrow night. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So race one. Apologize if that's tough to read. It's tougher than it was last time. But race one, pace setter here is going to be El Magnifico or Batten Down. I got two horses here that I think could be setting the pace. The safe play here for me is El Magnifico at six to one. After seven races, I feel like I've been talking about this horse since november this horse has been on the derby trail off the derby trail peripheral to the derby trail i mean i don't know about on but he's been in some races that have been leading up to it it's about time for this freaking horse to break his maiden and he's got a chance here going eight and a half for a long steve asmussen tyler gaffleone get it done the value play here i'm going down to my third pick the six horse eusebius got pratt mccarthy the horse went nine furlongs already and got a second place in that one, going down to eight and a half furlongs here. I think this sets up well for Eusebius, if that's how you say his name. Perfect. Uh, pronunciation, perfect. I have no idea. But um, listen, a relevant metric is back. If you're new to the channel, you don't know about this, but we used to do this constantly. And it's a fun thing for me because I'm a bigger smart ass than I am a handicapper. But race one, big shout out. A relevant metric goes to the number one horse of Boathouse. Oh, Boathouse. Oh, Boathouse. Yes, absolutely. Shout out to the 90s grunge band, the Toadies. Oh, you're going Toadies. If you're familiar, okay. because behind the Boathouse, they were going to show you their dark secrets. They'll show you my dark secrets. There you go. All right. There you yeah. go. That's how that awesome fucking kingdom. relevant metric works. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Anyway, that was good. Some Possum Kingdom Magnifico. throwback. Hell yeah, dude. Yep. That's what we're doing. You know, the old guys got to throw some throwbacks in for the kids at home scoring because there's a lot of people scoring on a calculator and, uh, you know, wind chime or whatever they're doing. Yeah. Let's move forward. Race two. Race two. All right. We're getting some smaller races than we had on Friday. That's fine. Pace setter here for me is the number two horse, Bilal. Bilal going to be getting up on that pace at six furlongs. I don't think he's going to be holding it for long, though. I like the seven horse here as my safe play guanar yeah i'm having problems pronouncing a few of these three wins in yeah, five races few, for uh, you had a few uh you know bourbon barrel stouts had a few of them yeah sits off the pace a little more down this and has a little bit more down the stretch um got a little bit more to give so uh, shall we say a horse that can push Bilal a little bit and then pass him down the stretch i see that happening but i got a value play here as well the number six horse top play at 9 to 2, Pirate, Pletcher, and Irad. Horse came in third at the Hopeful Stakes. This horse is this is a horse that's coming out of actual graded stakes races. Um, seems like a pretty strong combo. Irad and Pletcher getting 9 to 2. I feel like there's value in that. Irad tries on a Pletcher horse. That's one thing that you got going for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, relevant yes. metric. Irrelevant re <laughs> irrelevant metric. You got it. Team. Sorry. Get my tongue tied. Bledsoe. Of course. Shout out Drew Bledsoe. For the kids scoring at home, he was a uh, elite NFL quarterback for the New England Patriots. Number one overall pick Ooh. out of Washington State. All loved, loved him. him. And you loved him. He was the, uh, you know, he was heading for the Super Bowl. Great, great young New England club. 20 yes. years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it was. And he uh, blows his knee out. And this young guy that... Uh, 
out of Michigan, sixth, seventh rounder. Skinny Tom little Brady dude. Comes in and uh, goes on to be the greatest of all time, and you never hear from Drew Bledsoe again. But shout out to Drew. We love you. I thought you were better than Tom. I still believe it. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, there you have it. Drew Bledsoe. Thank you. Uh, what's his name? What's his name, the guy? Tim Robinson, Carl Havoc. Carl Havoc, thank you. Carl Havoc. Carl Havoc, man, what a legend. <laughs> yeah, legend on the channel. You'd love to see him. Anytime yeah. we can, we can uh, shoehorn Carl Havoc in or Jim Mersey, they're going to get in. Race three, right. let's move. Let's move along to race three. Um, race three. My safe play here, there's so many firsters, I didn't feel like picking a pace setter in this one, but at the very top here, safe play is a 6-5 to five Cox horse that came very close to winning last time out. Uh, Florent mm -hmm. Giroux, Brad Cox, discreet mischief, that's going to be my safe play. I think a lot of people understand why that's a safe play, but my value play here, Bookie Brent at 12-1, to one, and I'll tell you for why. Wow. So this is a firster shooting out here. Um, Bookie, Philip Bowers, the trainer, Gabby Sanchez on the mount. This Sias. horse, Sias on the mount, yeah. 59 8 was his last workout going five furlongs. Previous to that, he was dropping all one minute workouts at five furlongs. This race is going to seven furlongs. This horse has been training and working out pretty well. He might just be a workout warrior. But in terms of a value play, 12 to 1, I like to take a chance on that as a first star. I think this is a horse that at 12 to 1, you could see some serious value in. 12 to 1, fine. I mean, that's a deep field. I can't kill deep you field. for it. <laughs> Irrelevant <laughs> metric. And this is where things go a little bit sideways for you. And if uh, you got kids standing around the TV, I would like for you to walk away, uh, you know, put the kids to bed or whatever. But the six horse, discreet mischief. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jerry Sandusky, who was uh, a leader in discreet mischievous activity. <laughs> you can do it. Let's just get through this. Before, he, be, before it was uh, not so discreet. So shout out to Jerry. Wow. All right, let's move along. Yeah, keep it moving. Let's go. Race four. Uh, pace setter, too close to call. There were a bunch here that were pretty darn close. My safe play here, I'm also going very chalky in terms of safe play, but what can you say? Miles ahead, 80% in the money. Uh, distance is right for this horse. He runs well at Keeneland. Miles ahead, I'm sure you heard his name 100 times. Value play here, I'm going to the four horse, my second pick at 9-2. to two. This is a horse that we've seen at at Turfway a number of times, usually runs on Tapita, but five races ago, he had a pretty strong win at Keeneland under Tyler Gaffleone. Who's his mount now? Tyler Gaffleone. Nighttime, nine to two, the four horse. I, I like the play here. You want a relevant metric or no? <laughs> what what you, you want, got? You want one or no? Shit. I mean, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Uh, shout out to the... Uh, Two horse surveillance. Uh huh. And the personnel who did surveillance on Jerry Sandusky, uh, who put an end to Jerry's uh, horse play or rhythmic slapping that was going on in the locker room with the young boys at uh, Penn State. All right, let's move. Race uh five. Yeah. Let's let's keep this thing moving. It's live not footage. Funny. It's not fun. I, I've got some live footage of the relevant metric, by the way. Oh, That's right. It's only fun for me, and uh, you know, it's not that fun. All right, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Please. Race uh, five. These thoughts, these thoughts and opinions are only mine, not of trust the prophets. Good. Race five, the uh, pace setter, the number nine horse, Our Tempest, uh, going nine and a half furlongs here on turf. I don't usually take up a uh, a pace horse here, uh, a, a horse that I think will be setting the pace in something that is nine and a half furlongs, but it happens. And I am taking the safe play here, Our Tempest, seven to two. This horse does have a pace advantage, already went nine furlongs and came in second in that race. So in terms of being able to set the pace and sustain at a long distance of nine furlongs, our Tempest has already shown he can do it. Todd Pletcher, Castellano, there's something there. 
I'm going way down here for my value play, though, at 8-1. to one. Cyber attack, Michael Maker, horse with some closing ability, again, at 9.5 furlongs. Usually look for closers here. Uh, ran just under 8.5 furlongs. It was like 8.3 furlongs last time out, uh, first time out. Uh, this horse could show you something, and Irad Ortiz on the mount. That's a consideration here. Irad, Michael Maker on turf, 8-1. to one. Seems like a pretty good deal. Let's get it. And uh, the irrelevant metric for race five is Chasing Kitty. Big shout out to our guy, Flypaper. Fly P. Oh, okay. We're going to be safe this time. No, uh, yeah. You know, if you're watching yeah. Fly P, and we know that you are, uh, his favorite pastime is Chasing Kitty of certain varieties that we will not go into depth here, but, uh, you know, you can, yeah. you can deduce. Yeah, meow. Let's go. Let's go to race Stray six. Cats. And we'll keep this thing moving, babe. Yeah, Stray cats. Race six. So, we're getting into the big stuff here. We get some big names here. We do. We're, we're starting to get into it. So seven furlongs on dirt. Pace setter for me here is Wicko, the number two horse. We start to get into the safe plays. I'm going to go down to the nine horse, Minnesota ready at five to two. Going to be a mid-pack closer, eight, 80% in the money. And also running in fairly respectable classes compared to the rest of the field here. But, hey, Manny Wah, we've all heard that name. The number three horse here at 10 to 1, Manny Wah. Second place in the last two races, both G3s. Getting a bargain here. Flavian Pratt on the mount. I think you get a lot of value at 10 to 1 for Manny Wah. Shout out to Ray's Kane, the four horse. Uh, that's the irrelevant yeah. metric is the four. Shout out to the Medellin cartel out of Colombia. They were raising cane for a long time. Cocaine, baby. Wow. Bringing it up to Miami on boats, uh, submarines, airplanes, dropping it into the, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Congratulations. I mean, those are some of the ambassadors of the country in drug trade. And we'd love to see it. I mean, it's just Troll on the booger sugar. Yeah. Absolutely. And you, it, it's just... Uh, I congratulate them, and uh, Ray's Kane is just a one of those reminders of uh, you know one of the pastimes of this country and what what built who we are today. Thank you, Ray's Kane. Next up is Race Seven, Keeneland yes. Saturday. This is the Bluegrass Day. Let's go. Yeah, so I got the pace setter here is Poolside Slim. Poolside Slim, the one horse, my safe play at the very top there, Bucho. Four to one, very strong down the stretch. This is a deep closer for me um, and also runs in a lot of high class races. Philip Bauer, Martin Garcia. The value play for me, I'm going back to the one horse. Poolside Slim at eight to one appears to be the pace, but also is a horse that even though it sets the pace, doesn't seem to fade that much. Even in some of these deep races, this horse could hold its form. And I like the value here at eight to one on Poolside Slim. Well, if you want a relevant metric, it's going to be tough for me to get through it. Okay. The 10 horse. <laughs> the 10 horse pounce. Yeah. Just get through this quickly, which is what oh, Jerry yeah. Sandusky <laughs> probably said to most of his victims. <laughs> Shout out to Richard Ramirez, the night stalker. Oh. He used to pounce on his victims through a uh, unopened window on a summer night in Los Angeles and uh, really would just surprise his victims in Los Angeles. One of the greatest uh, rape murderer serial killers of all time, Richard Ramirez, the night stalker. Shout out. Horrible. Man, Moving on. <laughs> all right, race eight. At least, so again, pace. At least I was ashamed of myself. Race I'm eight. <laughs> I've got the pace setters too close to call here. Had a lot of horses that were pretty close. The safe play for me here at the very top. Olva Star at five to two. One of the paciest horses in this race. There were a couple up there. Four icicles is the other one. So I've got down below. Paciest. Wow. Okay. Words. Um, this is the horse that is least likely to fade down the stretch, in my opinion. I saw Icicles as being a heavy fading horse, 30 to 1. Uh, the morning line setters probably saw the same thing I did, but all the star at 5 to 2 has a chance to wire or at least be really close to the pace and finish it off. And if you're looking for value, Mary, quite contrary at 10 to 1, the five horse, my third ranked here. Really like this 6 8 combo. 
But if you like a closer here, this is a, the best closer in the race, in my humble opinion here. Even though the <laughs> Luca Panici as the jockey probably helps it get a 10 to 1, but the horse itself I like as a closer here. You know we don't like the bad mouth jockeys, but but no, we don't. Old, no. old Luca. I'll revisit his score. Bet. Maybe tough he needs bet. an update. Yeah. No, it's a tough bet. I'm it sorry, is. Luke. Uh, you know your family's great. Yes, we'll celebrate we love you, Christmas Luca. together next year and all that. We love you, bud. But uh, it's a tough bet. Yeah. So I agree. Six eight. That seems reasonable. Yeah, I think Mary Quay Contrary getting Luke on the mount here is kind of an insult. I think you could probably play if you had a jockey, but sorry, Luke. Uh, Luke is really bad. I'm sorry. I would love to see Luke get a win here, right? Get or yeah. get, get well, something. I want to see, Luke, uh, I want to see him turn around. Listen, absolutely. Man, he's out there for a reason, and these guys are yeah. all warriors, babe. If you're playing at this level, listen, Luca could go. Panici could go be a jockey at like parks or some uh, mid range course. I always say parks is like the mid level course in sure. America and be great. This yeah. is Keen. He's in the elite. So, uh, Luke, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I don't, ha I don't have a lot of confidence in Luke. But I'll redo his along. score and see if he, he improves. But yeah, you yeah, got to revisit these scores every once in a while, right? No, that's a bad score. And I, and I believe every. Every <laughs> number of it. All right. All right. All right. Irrelevant Luke, metrics. How many bodies no. are buried in a big pond? Did you use a big you know, red carpet to roll up a victim? Race. No. Throw them uh, in a Caprice classic? No? Okay. I could throw one in real quick off the off the uh, cuff. Tony oh, Elva. why did I ask for it? Tony Go Elva, for the it. cocaine and uh, heroin addicted uh, skateboarding star. Elva's star. All right. That's how a skateboarder in 1980s or 90s. Tony Elba was a legend. Wow. Big cool. drug problems. We'll move along. Yeah. We're moving along to number nine here. Race number nine. Pace setter being yep. the 12th horse. Yes, I am free. I've got him down in the sixth slot here. This is a race that goes five and a half furlongs on turf. Mischief Magic, my safe play here at seven to two. Got him all the way at the top. And why? Oh, why do I have mischief magic all the way up there? Weird. I can't. I can't possibly. Can't imagine why. why. Can't yes. imagine why. Charlie Appleby, as we talked about on the Friday show, if you haven't watched it, go ahead and rewatch that. It's worth a listen. But Charles Appleby, if he enters a horse in North America, there is a reason he enters it in North America. It's going to be somewhere. Um, way, Chaz, yeah. you'll get. You're going to get some commentary live from Keeneland from me with Chaz. Uh, we are personal, uh, you know, relationship. Yeah, I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to make it sound too too close. You know, we're not gay or anything like that, but very close. Good. Okay. So for my, for, well done. Yeah, I think you I think you summed that up nicely. Uh, for the for the value play, I am going back to the pace setter, even though I'm digging deep here. Um, yes, I am free. So this horse. The, the reason he's at, what is he, 12 to 1? This is the pace setter. This is the one that I think is going to be jumping out. He's getting the 12 slot. He is classing up. But from where he's been at, he's been working up the ladder 80% uh, times he's been the pace setter. So I think he's a definite there. Like if I look at my stats, it's not often I see a pace setter being the pace setter in 80% of his races. But there he is. Also 80% in the money. So he's finishing these races. Um, I just think if this horse gets in the front, I'm not saying he's going to win the race. Mischief Magic, I think, is the, the horse I'd play here because there are some some BC horses here like Beer Can Man. But I think this is a horse that he, he could class up, hang on to that lead for, for a bit. It's a short race. Things can happen. A relevant metric. Okay. There's two horses in here that you are really, really neglecting to uh, bring up at all. One of them is beer. I'm sorry. Front run the Fed. Yeah. Bad beat Brian. Bad beat Brian. I mean, there's some significant Those horses in this race. Trust the Prophets legends. I mean, when we started this channel four years ago. Yeah. It's been a long ride. Nice ride. Those horses were super relevant. They're still in the game, baby. These yeah. are seven and eight-year-old horses. These are veterans of the trade. 
And they're still at Keeneland, which means they're running in meaningful races with big purses. Yeah. And I uh, just wanted to throw a shout out. Bad beat Brian, front run the fed are like eight years old. I mean, they have to be. Yeah. Got to be eight years old. You don't see many eight year old horses running. I'll take a look tonight and see how many old tip sheets we have those guys in from like 2020, oh, 2021. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean it's just inspiring. It's inspiring to see because, I mean, I'm telling you that those horses are eight years old. I don't, I, I don't have it in front of me. Put it on paper. Yeah. Minimum of six, seven, eight years old. Those horses have been around for five years minimum. Yeah. Racing. And, uh, you know, you love to see that because a lot of these horses get, you know, God forbid a catastrophic injury or whatever. Oh, yeah. But a lot of them, for financial reasons, they run for a year or two and they're pulled back. Yep. Front run the Fed. Bad Beat Brian have been around for a hundred. The relevant metric for me, Coppola. Um, if you want to sandwich in between Godfather and Godfather 2, there's a little movie called The Conversation, which was actually somewhat brilliant with Gene Hackman. I'll throw that in there for the 11 horse. Force it in, babe. Javelin that shit in there. And can we talk about The Godfather 3, though? No, and, we're moving uh, on to race 10. Be a couple, like, yeah, let's move. Like, nobody race 10. Go, we've talked that. about this one. We've talked about this one ad nauseum. This is the bluegrass. My pace setter here is door knock. My safe play is door knock. The horse gets in front and fights anyone who tries to pass him, including Sierra Leone. We've seen that before. I like door knock as my, I like him as my top play here. My formula actually wedges just a touch in between the two. I'm actually surprised just a touch gets seven to two here. I thought he was going to be a little bit higher than that, but I mean, what can you say? It's a Brad Cox horse with Florangero in the mount. Um, my value play here, I'm going to stick with Brad Cox in a horse that he has been pushing into Turfway and beginning. I think he's got two wins in one second place, a second place in his first maiden special weight horse that won the Bataglia, Encino. If we have a drop from Encino, man, wheezing the juices, I would throw that in right now. But as it is, I'm just going to have to talk about it. Well, I do have a, an irrelevant metric that is Encino, a reference to Encino, man. No, and no, sorry. That, that was no, that was it. Stomp all over it because it's a deserving irrelevant metric. And yeah, for the record, folks, I don't know if you follow like the Joe Rogan uh, podcast, that whole thing, all the comedians that he represents, and all this thing. It's like a uh, Joe Rogan sphere. Of, yeah. Uh, comedians and i'm a big stand-up comedian guy love it i i love uh about a third of the guys he represents paulie shore is a pile of shit not a fan yeah never really got his humor never really will and i think he's a drug addict loser and uh his mom owned the comedy store in la and I that's think right a pile, of, a pile of shit i think paulie yeah. shore is a pile of shit Sorry. bit of a nepo baby right Oh, yeah. I mean, so Encino, man, oh, blah, 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 whatever that guy said, he was garbage. Uh, Paul you, know Shore, who's, you know who's better in Encino, man, is Michael DeLuise, Dom DeLuise's son, who Whoa. plays the bully. Shush, deep that cut. guy. Deep, deep cut. cut. Michael DeLuise. Yeah. He was actually well, the guy who, who hurled in the mirth mobile in uh, Wayne's World as well. Yeah, and you love to see that. Love God to damn. see that. Put that drop up. Nobody has it. <laughs> love to see it. Love to see it. See it. Well, Let's always wrap up. Reset, but, uh, Go ahead. Yeah. This will be all reset needs to be put in. We'll have that next time. Next time. Yeah. We'll be, uh, you know, whatever. But all dude, right. Let's go. Last race. Saturday I mean night. You want to talk about horses that this have been is with a us? Masterpiece of a race, if I will. It is. <laughs> it starts with masterpiece. But you talked about it a couple races ago. Horses that have been with us for years that we've we've been watching, and in some cases, there's one in here that I've profited off of nicely. Um, let's start at the top. So pace setters too close to call. There's a bunch in here that were uh, really close to the pace. My top horse here is masterpiece at seven to two, classing up the joint. Former BC Turf horse. He's a veteran. Dutro, Irad Ortiz. Let's see Masterpiece do it again. Love to see it. Uh, running B, getting below two to one. I'm a little bit shocked. I thought this field was way more even. 
injunction at 10 to 1. If I go down to the eight horse there, get yeah, getting 10 to 1, 60% in the money. But I love his speed figures at this distance. Second to masterpiece in terms of hashing out through the speed figures, looking at this distance of eight and a half furlongs on turf. And uh, yeah, digging injunction. Katoden was the horse that I was talking about in terms of a horse that I profited off of the most. I've 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 gotten some some nice plays out of him last year before he went on a hiatus. Hasn't come back and or he's come back and hasn't been the same horse since. Would love to see him rebound here, especially at twenty to one, but I don't have him high enough to to make that play. We'll see. We don't, we, don't like to, we don't like to talk negatively about uh jockeys, but uh Julie Leper. Uh, Julie Leperu is like a stop sign for me. Uh, you pull up to the stop sign and you put your brakes on and you just stop. You look left, you look right, and you do not put one dollar on that guy. Yeah. I don't care what the circumstances are. And that's the end of my conversation with Julie. Love you, Julie. Uh, you know, but this is not for me. But with Masterpiece, I mean, this is a that's going to yeah. be hard to be seven to two. I agree. Safe play, safe play. If you can get near seven to two guys, yeah, that is a joke. I don't think you're going to, I think it's going to be, uh, eight to five, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, running B is going to take some of it. Chad Brown, Gaff on turf. That's a tough combo to beat. The only thing yeah. is I'll say it's a get out race. A lot of people will be down a thousand dollars in their, uh, bankroll. <laughs> This is the get out race. Uh, it's the last race of the weekend and or uh, last race of Saturday, rather. They'll dump and, on Camp uh, Hope. Yeah, looking for a hero. And Masterpiece should be the hero. I like Masterpiece That's more true. than Running B. Same so. here. That's why I got him number one. Let's All right. close it off, folks. We wanted to keep these short and sweet. And, uh, man, I'm excited to go. Oh, man. I excited hope you for you. The, those irrelevant metrics because, man. I really spent a lot of time yeah, putting those together I think so. for you, crafting those for you. Peace.